brain. It nurtures the plants and wildlife of the Sonoran Desert. It restores our water table. But here, rain is seasonal and rarely falls. For ancient desert dwellers, capturing and using rainwater for drinking and for irrigating crops often meant the difference between survival and extinction. Hi, I'm Eric Drew. As someone who teaches sustainability, I understand the important benefits of capturing and using rainwater. The fact is, up to 45% of the water we use goes to outdoor irrigation. So when we harvest rainwater, we conserve our drinking water for drinking, and practically speaking, that saves money. Rainwater is not only free, it's salt free, and that makes it a good source of water for all of our plants. Now, let's look at some examples of the different ways that rainwater is captured and used. At her Midtown home, Sonia Norman uses a low-tech approach. We do very little auxiliary watering here. And one thing that we did is this walkway that I'm standing on, this is all elevated, not much, but it's elevated a bit. Uh, and so sheds water to trees on either side. Before doing anything, Norman says it's important to simply observe where the water is going. We originally, we had a rain tank that we were going to install on that side of the roof. Then we realized that the water is flowing off the roof and it's watering these trees, half of which were volunteers. And we realized they were doing pretty well and we said, well, let's just let the water water these trees because they're in a good place. They provide shade. Let's look at this rain gutter right here. Now this, we are capturing the water just off of this porch. And all of this water that is collected in this gutter comes out this spout, and this spout then shunts the water toward this tree. And anywhere in this general direction is fine because the root zone is, it's out here. In a community effort, Sonia worked with her neighbors to launch the Treat Avenue Trees Project, planting 100 trees to be fed with harvested street runoff. So I spent a lot of time studying the street, looking at where the water flows. And that dictated where to plant the trees and cut the curbs all of which required a city permit. There are protocol on how the curbs are to be cut, uh, how low they are to be, how low the basins are to be, how wide the opening is to be, how much, uh, how much of the right-of-way you need to leave for pedestrian use. We deliberately used very large rocks, especially next to the curb where when the water comes in, it's going to be coming in with a lot of force. We don't want to lose our embankment here. In Tucson, there are a number of public demonstration sites where you can see rainwater harvesting in action. One is right here at the Tucson Botanical Gardens. Botanical Gardens is a peaceful, relaxing place for visitors to commune with nature and to experience a showcase of garden landscapes that use minimal amounts of water. The gardens use a variety of passive rainwater harvesting techniques. One example is this French drain. There are different ways to make French drains, but this one is simply a metal grate over a three by three foot hole that is filled with gravel. Rain that falls on this hardscape flows into the French drain where it slowly disperses underground to feed nearby plants. In other areas of the garden, simple earth contours called berms and swales help to channel rainwater directly to plants. A berm is terrain that's built up around a depression in the soil known as a swale. When it rains, water flows onto the berm and down into the swale where it waters trees and vegetation. Another example of passive rainwater harvesting is this terraced hillside planted with prehistoric native crops. Stone check dams on the terracing work to slow rainwater and allow it to soak into the ground. The botanical gardens also employs active rainwater harvesting. For example, rainwater that falls onto the roof of this outdoor gathering space is collected by gutters and channeled into a large cistern where it is stored for later use. Now let's head over to Fort Low Road west of Campbell for a docent tour of another rainwater demonstration site, the Tucson campus of the Nature Conservancy. This is our large iconic cistern on the property. It holds 3,300 gallons of water. It takes 1.8 inches of rain to fill this up, and in one year, that's enough to fill a swimming pool. I'm Krista Breyer, and I am a docent with rainwater harvesting at the Nature Conservancy here in Tucson. Krista says the Conservancy's offices were constructed with conservation in mind. 
but we didn't plan on rainwater harvesting. So this building is what we call a retrofit for rainwater harvesting. So all the items that you see on this campus for rainwater harvesting were put in after the fact. So a homeowner or a commercial owner can put in all these items to an existing property. Rainwater from the Conservancy cisterns is piped to landscape basins filled with a layer of mulch where it infiltrates into the earth to water nearby plants. And even the parking lot is designed to harvest rainwater. We wanted to keep the water on the property, and by doing that, we put in what was called permeable rings. That allows the water to percolate, so it's to sink into the ground. We wanted to slow it, spread it, and sink it, and keep it here on our property. Finally, the carport on the property not only shades vehicles with solar panels that provide electricity, the panels also act as a watershed to fill a 30,000 gallon underground cistern. Water really is Tucson's most important natural resource. So as our demand for water grows, our need to conserve grows right along with it. Whether at home or business, harvesting and using rainwater is good for our environment. It protects valuable water resources and makes our community more sustainable. To find out about rainwater harvesting rebates and how Tucson Water is working with its customers to secure our water future, contact Tucson Water at 791 4331 or visit tucsonaz.gov/water